Item Number SCP-1177 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1177 is currently housed in the containment quarters of Site-40. A staffed, closed-circuit camera monitors SCP-1177 at all times. If SCP-1177 attempts to practice self-harm, alert the head researcher as soon as possible. Per standard humanoid containment precautions, personnel are to be searched before entering SCP-1177's chamber. Personnel are subject to an additional search upon exiting the chamber. Description SCP-1177 is a Latin American female of indeterminate age who possesses the ability to exchange severed pieces of her own body for goods and services. Although she appears elderly, this may be a result of her long-term abuse of her anomalous property and lifestyle. Interviews reveal that, prior to entering Foundation custody, she had spent much of her adult life as a homeless vagrant. SCP-1177 was discovered in the casino in Kansas after she bribed the doorman into allowing her entry and made several attempts to play nickel slot machines without the use of casino tokens before being apprehended by security and delivered to paramedics. Foundation agents alerted to these events posed as employees of a local mental health facility and were given custody of the woman without incident. The slot machine and the rug under it were submitted for cleaning. Possessions found on SCP-1177's person upon containment included one costume jewelry ring, two plastic earrings, one toothbrush, one comb, fine-toothed, three empty wrappers belonging to the fast food chain, two instant lottery tickets, scratched off with no redemption value, one pocket knife, one washcloth, bloodstained, one movie ticket stub, one piece of ham kept in an additional fast food chain wrapper, and one 16-ounce bottle of rubbing alcohol, with half the contents remaining. These objects were evaluated and discarded. Physical examination following containment revealed signs of self-mutilation covering her body, including numerous scars, healing wounds, missing teeth, and patches of hair. SCP-1177's fifth toes and right fourth finger are missing. Her right middle finger has been crudely amputated after the lower joint, as has the upper joint of her right index finger. Tissue samples used by SCP-1177 are most commonly strips of flesh from the arm or leg, irregularly cut off using a pocket knife or other implement, removed and cleaned of blood using a washcloth before being presented. Those who are offered a section of SCP-1177's body recognize it as being detached human flesh, but do not manifest revulsion or surprise. Instead, they accept the flesh as an alternate form of payment, like a voucher or debit card. This varies in effectiveness based on several factors, including the subject's normal likeliness of accepting alternate forms of payment, the size of the payment accepted, and the amount and type of flesh given. Incident Log 07-40-1177 As demonstrated by an attempted containment breach on 7-24, SCP-1177 is capable of using body parts as a form of bribery. During food delivery, the woman gave the attendant which she had apparently gnawed off without detection, in exchange for release from containment quarters. According to testimony, SCP-1177 quickly maneuvered to the front lobby of Site-40. The woman borrowed a pair of scissors from the receptionist before attempting to exit, failing and requesting that the front doors be unlocked. The desk attendant denied the request and called for a security officer. When security arrived, SCP-1177 was attempting to use scissors to sever the remainder of her left ring finger. Experiment Log 1177-1 On 8-6, an experiment was conducted in which two strips of flesh, each measuring a square inch, were taken from SCP-1177's leg, sanitized, and given to researchers. Dr. Raines purchased a hamburger at the Site-40 cafeteria, but did not consume it, citing loss of appetite. Research assistant Clark took his sample of SCP-1177 to a local convenience store and attempted to exchange it for a pack of cigarettes. When the shopkeeper asked for his ID, Clark displayed the piece of flesh and was met with revulsion. Hoping to avoid further argument, the research assistant left for a bookstore, where he successfully bought a used book with the sample. Stress fractures keeping your job from getting to you, on clearance for 
Since then, further experimentation has yielded the following transactions. One piece of muscle tissue, 0.5 ounce by weight, for three bags of brand chocolate candies, priced at 50 cents each. Successful. One lock of hair for one comic book. Volume 1, Issue 3, priced at $2.99. Transaction failed. The operator considered the payment insufficient. One lock of hair for one comic book. NFL Super Pro, Volume 1, Issue 1, priced at 3 for $1. Transaction successful. One two-ounce vial of blood for one bag of brand charcoal briquettes, priced at $6.99. Transaction failed. The convenience store clerk considered the payment insufficient. Three two-ounce vials of blood for one bag of brand charcoal briquettes, priced at $6.99. Transaction successful. The researcher was given three dimes and one nickel, value 35 cents, in change. One piece of skin, measuring nine square inches in area, for one gold-plated necklace. Successful. The transaction was made at a pawn shop. As of 8, 10, the piece of skin is framed and on display in one of the shop's cabinets. Experiment Log 1177-2 On 8, 12, Researcher McAim stood on 5th Street in downtown from 1321 to 1352. During this time, he approached numerous pedestrians and requested that they make change for him for the subway from one of 10 samples of SCP-1177 stamped 1177-45 through 1177-55, each a 0.5 ounce chunk of skin and flesh taken from SCP-1177's abdomen. Each person who accepted a sample was tracked by a Foundation task force until a transaction was made which used their piece of tissue. The following results were recorded. 1177-45 Placed in the tip jar of a coffee house. 1177-46 Used at an electronics store to purchase the PC game. 1177-47 Used to partially cover the bill at an Irish tavern. 1177-48 Placed in an envelope and mailed. 1177-49 Given to a homeless man. When this occurred, the man became very agitated and shouted unintelligibly at the subject until he was out of sight. 1177-51 Deposited in a savings account at the local branch of Wachovia Bank. 1177-52 Placed in a dancer's top at the Gentleman's Club. 1177-53 Exchange for chips at Casino 1177-54 Possessor evaded tracking behind an abandoned storage building. When the Foundation agent continued pursuit, he was met with gunfire. Agent disengaged, further investigation recommended. 1177-55 Given in the offering plate at the Lutheran Church. Conclusion Samples of SCP-1177 are not single-use, though their value may not remain consistent amongst transactions. The only method of estimating how much of SCP-1177 remains in circulation is through noting the amount of scar tissue and number of open wounds on SCP-1177. Of special note is that, at no point during any SCP-1177 experiment did subjects other than informed researchers display awareness of their composition. Experiment Log 1177-3 Experiment 1177-3 is currently in process, with a more long-term focus. The intention of measuring the age at which 1177 samples become inert. As of 318, sample 1177-71, which was removed from SCP-1177 six months prior to this date, retains value in lieu of legal tender or as a voucher for other transactions.